Hello, welcome to Scott Place. Uh, tonight I am doing a first play of Plans of Caledonia. Now, the first thing I should mention about this is that I have the Kickstarter Deluxe Edition that comes in this very nice um, sleeve. Um, the other difference, I believe, is that I have metal coins for the money, whereas the standard retail version just comes with cardboard tokens. Anyway, let's get this open and see what the contents of the box is. One of the first things I noticed when this arrived was the weight of it. It is a significantly weighty game. Um, there is a lot packed into this small box. Um, I really like that. I am not a fan of really big boxes with lots of air and not many components in. Um, whereas as you can see, this is quite the opposite of that. Uh, lots of wooden bits. We'll have a look at those in a minute. And uh, here's the, the metal coins. Let's take a look at those. So we have ones, a nice copper. And uh, I should say a bit about the, the setting of the game, I guess, um, as you may have guessed from the um the name of the game it's set in scotland um in is it the 18th or 19th century 18th i think uh, let's see if the game if the rule books rule book tells me anything about uh plans of caledonia is a strategic economic game set in 19th century scotland um, so the, the money is all pounds, um, so you have these really nice, well, I have these really nice metal one pound coins. Um, these are slightly more like our pennies than the pounds, but that can be forgiven. They're really nice. Um, actually, I don't know if they are. One pound. They must be pounds, surely. I'm I'm assuming they're pounds. So one pounds. We have some fives. Uh, yeah, these are really nice. These are these have a good weight and feel to them. Um, not quite as substantial as real coins as these metal coins normally um, are and some tens um, these are a kind of yellowy or well, greeny yellow color still quite nice um, nice um, I believe the figure on the back is meant to be Mary Queen of Scots I believe um, the um, fives have a, a lion rampant on them, which is a nice little touch. And the ones have a, a sort of fairly generic cross. Um, not sure if that has any significance at all. Okay, let's see what else have we got here. Uh, a couple of dice. I don't know what those are for. Um, ah, two dice for the solo game. So I will definitely be using those. A um, bunch of baggies. That's very nice. Score pad. Uh, plenty of 
sheets in the score pad. Um, and let's have a look. Lots of wooden components. So, oh, this is nice. They're the player pieces from the look of it. Yeah. Uh, yes, clan components already separated out by, that's, they're not clan pieces, those are clan pieces, by player colour, and uh, blue. So you have an, a nice, almost, not but not quite sky blue, uh, a nice red, black and white. Um, I would guess that those wouldn't cause any issues for colourblind players. Um, particularly the red and the blue are quite far apart. Um, but I'm not colourblind myself, so I don't know for certain. Uh, we have some milk bottles. Uh, some kind of people. I don't know what those are. White people. Ah, right, again, player colours, okay, so they must be workers, yeah, so set of black workers, set of red workers, white workers and blue workers. Uh, these are more player pieces, okay, so what have we got here then? So he, in this one, first one, we have sheep, barrels, and some cheese. So, trying to see if I can see what the barrels are. Ah, distilleries. And, yeah, then we have workers, and then in this one we've got cows bakeries, fields, uh, kind of um, wheat type shape, um, and yeah, bakeries are bread shaped, um, so that's that, and then we've got another set of player pieces, some Cubes uh, look to be about five mil, maybe six mil, um, which are merchants, uh, a hexagon, settlement token, some kind of oh, it's like a a, a rosette type thing, which is a glory token, round turn order token and a shipping token. Oh, that's like um, the wheel on a ship. That's really nice. Uh, so, yeah, that's a set of each of those in the player colours. Uh, black and blue. Um, what else we got here? These are like uh, little cupcake <laughs> type shapes. One of those at ah, wool, apparently. So, and we've got that must be bread. Yeah, it's bread. That must be grain. Yeah, it's grain. Uh, some yellow cheese pieces. Nice. Some brown barrels, uh, whiskey, excellent. And then, okay, some plastic. Oh, these are really nice. These are quite thick, like probably about five mil thick plastic transparent pieces. Um, I like those, I like those a lot. And then we have, all right, these are cotton 
tobacco and sugar cane markers. Um, I believe this is for tracking um, imports. Um, you track the rarity of each import token and good old silica gel bag. Okay, and uh, we have rules in English and German. Um, okay, and we've got a note on the both rule books saying that other languages are, are available on the Karma Games uh, website. Um, French, Italian, and I think that's Spanish. Apologies if that's incorrect. My uh, flag recognition is not <laughs> as good as it should be. And then this is what contributes to most of the weight in the game, the punch boards. Uh, ooh, that's a good sign. Uh, things falling out already. Let's put those down there. Uh, a couple more punch boards. Okay, put that to one side. Okay, let's have a look at what we've got here. Okay, first off, let's have a look at the uh, thickness of these boards. Yeah, not bad. Not the thickest punch boards I've seen. Uh, they've got a, a nice satin finish to them. Um, not too glossy and not too matte. Um, the art is, if I remember rightly, um, Clemens Franz. Uh, yes, Clemens Franz. Um, really nice really the print quality is fantastic the yeah like all of his art the art is really nice um yeah lots of i can see lots of little details in there um so yeah we've got what i believe are player boards let's have a look at the, the rules again let's see if we can figure out what all this is Yes, so we should have four player boards, um, as it is a one to four player game. Um, the, yeah, so these big boards are the player boards. Um, the cardboard one coins, you can see they're very similar to the, the metal ones. Um, yeah, even have the, the cross on the, the other side. That's nice. Uh, what else do we have on here? Let's see. This must be a clan tile. Yeah. Uh, so this is clan Campbell, clan Buchanan, clan Ferguson, clan Cunningham, uh, Mackenzie, that's McDonald, Stuart. Robertson's and there must be one more somewhere which I'll I'll find later um, what else we've got our ah, export box tiles not sure what those are for uh, although this clan Buchanan has one of these boxes on there so my I suspect each player gets one of these um, glory tiles, just got a number 30 on one side and a 60 on the other, not sure what those are for. And we have goods tiles here, so that's like three bread, three bread, three cheese, uh, three grain, and that must be three milk on those. Um, again, not sure what those are for. Um, what else do we have? These are starting tiles. Okay, now it looks like you get different combinations of goods and money 
when you start. That's interesting. Um, these little round ones are port bonus markers. Okay, and it looks like there are four for each um, player colour. That's nice. And then we have scoring tiles. So this is something I do know a little bit about. It's a, it's a little like the the scoring in Terra Mystica, uh, where at the end of each round you have um, a, a scoring thing that goes on. Um, and yeah, you have so you have a random selection of these. Uh, and there are nine in the game, and I think, if I remember rightly, there are five rounds. Um, so you're going to be using about half of them, just slightly over half of them. Uh, and then we have technology tiles. Not really certain what those are. And port bonus tiles. Um, these, I know, sit at the corners of the map, and if you're within... Um, reach of them um, you uh, can use whatever special ability is on that port um, and I believe you only get to do them once which is why you have these four markers uh, all right that looks like hmm not sure actually that might be end of game scoring or something on the back of the player board that's quite nice um, although it might have been nice to have that somewhere else so that you could refer to it during the game anyway uh, yeah so four of the sheets that have Slight differences, but basically the same tokens on. And then we have, these are the map pieces. And I believe there are four of these. So you, at the start of the game, I know you, you build the map out of these pieces. Um, and I think, yeah, I'm not. I'm not 100% certain how the map building works, but I think you can use either side. Um, then we have more of the... Oh, those aren't on there at all, are they? What are these then? Ah, uh, these are export contract tiles. Um, so yeah, looks like you've got stuff that you're um, exporting and then stuff that is imported to pay for those things, I guess. That's nice. More money. The fives, again, same back on the um, fives as on the metal ones. Um, and actually, speaking of the coins, one thing I notice is, so far, all of the... Um, the centering on all of the tokens is really nice. Um, haven't noticed any off-centered printing. Um, yeah, again, another board with map and coins and contracts. Um, then another one with more contracts. Is that map piece smaller than those? There must be. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, yes, yeah. so some of the map pieces, two of the map pieces are slightly smaller than the other two. That's interesting. Um, well, that's a nice little touch there on the, the contracts, these at the bottom thing is missing so it's it's like it's been torn off that's that's really nice again 
just that the art is just so nice um, and lots of little touches on there um, which you won't be able to see at all <laughs> but um, they are really nice um, okay what's this then one mcdonald tile i guess that's some kind of special thing for the um the mcdonald clan to use uh, more of these port bonus tiles, a couple more contracts, more coins, um, and then lots more contracts, um, some more money, and this this is one of the, the most interesting parts of this game, I think, um, the market board. So all of the, the goods um, from... Again, I haven't really read the rules in depth, but I, I've watched uh, a uh, playthrough. I think it was I watched Rado run through um, during the Kickstarter, um, and yeah, the sort of basic goods in the game um, you can generate them yourself. Um, but you can also buy them from a mar from the market, and that's where the transparent discs come in. Wherever I put those, these, yeah. So, so there's one that marks each the value of each good, um, and as you buy and sell them, they move up and down, and um, so you're not tied to. Um, being able to build the stuff to produce the goods you can buy them from the market if you want so that's really nice I think that will give quite a lot of flexibility in terms of um, uh, strategic approach to the game um, this is an export board um, we have another starting tile, more coins. Um, ah, yes, here's the the round markers as well. So these, all these shield um, round scoring. What are they called? Yeah, scoring tiles. Um, they go along here, and you have, as I said, five rounds, um, and so you. You set these out at the beginning of the game, so you know what you're aiming to do to, to score in each round. Um, looks like a, a score track around the outside, uh, and that's why the glory tiles, which were on the, the first things, why they had a 30 and a 60, um, because the scoring track goes up to 30. Um, if I remember rightly, this is where you also track the import goods um, using these markers that goes around the outside as well. So you're you're tracking both score and import goods. Um, and at the end of the game, uh, you score according to which of the import goods are the rarest. Um, yeah, different amounts according to which ones are the rarest and how many contracts you've got that involve those goods. Um, and the contracts are laid out in this um, sort of marketplace type thing. Um, and I think that's refilled every round or something like that. Uh, so yeah, I think this is some kind of scoring. Oh yeah, there's something about player order and you getting money. Um, and the last punch board we've got, one of those look like player aids, all in German on that side and English on that side. Yeah, player aid boards. 
uh, more of the God's Tiles, uh, the Ninth Clan, Clan and McEwen. Um, and yeah, another scoring tile, another port bonus tile, and some more money. So yeah, that's the contents of the box. Um, I'm really impressed with the component quality so far. Uh, the all the wooden bits look really nice. Uh, the uh, some of them are a bit rough. Um, looks like they're. Um, can't think what the word is layers of wood um, rather than solid wood although yeah I think maybe maybe some are and some aren't um, but yeah they all, they all look pretty good um, the the punch boards as I said they're not too thin um, I've seen thicker punch boards but they're they're not bad uh, the dice dice look okay um, they're a strange color <laughs> but um, and they're stamped slightly off side yeah they're not engraved which would have been nice um, but Printing looks pretty good, and yeah, I feel not bad for dice, really. They certainly roll. Okay, so I think I will now get all these punched. Uh, have a read of the rules. Let's have a actually let's have a look a quick flick through the rules. Um, okay, so set up game structure five rounds, four phases per round. Okay, and then it goes through the phases. Yeah, looks like the rules are really nicely laid out plenty of illustrations and examples and um, I'm guessing the sort of bold type is more important details uh, and similarly different coloured box outs which are probably significant um, yeah, okay, so and scoring. Yeah, the rules look really nicely laid out and explained. Um, very small two player variant. Uh, okay, slightly smaller map. All right, basically, the two player variant is you play on a smaller map. Um, and the solo variant, which is, of course, the, the variant I will be playing. And then they have, um, in fact, it doesn't even call those variants. They are just two-player game, solo game. And then we have a section for variants. Uh, simplifications, static import goods, without scoring and or port tiles, uh, tighter game map, okay. Okay. 
okay so you the port tiles where are those fine one okay these they have like um industrialized buildings illustrated on them um these up here um and what it's saying is you can you can use that side to cover up spaces on the map to make the the um game map tighter that's quite nice uh, you can play without the clans and you can do a clan auction that's that's nice because i'm sure there are well from what i've read the clans are supposed to be quite balanced um oh this is nice right okay so it actually details what um what was added to the game by the kickstarter community um anyway going back to the clans oh yeah my understanding is that from play testing the the clans are very well balanced um but i'm sure uh particular game groups will find they have favorite clans and so the clan auction variant i think is is a really nice touch so you can do an auction at the the start of the game um let's see uh, uh. okay so you you bid a number of victory points interesting Okay, is there something on the score sheet? I guess that is probably for that. Let's have a look at end game scoring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't know. Ah, oh, maybe the top you could do it. But yeah, it it says to to record the your uh, victory point bid. Um, as a as a negative victory point value. Okay, cool. Ah, right. Okay, so you randomly. I that's, that's 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 a really nice variant actually. You randomly choose uh, as many clan tiles as there are players. And then, uh, all right, allocate each clan tile a random starting tile. So that's the tiles that indicate the um, goods and money that you'll get at the start of the game. Uh, I believe. Um, then randomly determining a player who bids any number of VP, uh, then the player to the left can bid a higher amount and so on. Um, and right, and then they, yeah, whoever wins that auction takes gets their choice of clan from the look of it play with the winning bid writes down bid as negative bp on the score sheet places their token on the first place region and takes the clan tile along with the corresponding starting tile So they, they get to choose their clan. Um, and then you do for the, the second, third, and then the fourth 
if you're playing four player or you know whoever is the last player gets whatever's left as you'd expect yeah that's quite nice and it looks like they've got a, a link to well not a link a <laughs> url for um a yeah, page on their website karmagames.com um, clan variants um, for, for more gameplay variants that's nice right and then a an appendix okay that describes the port bonus tiles the scoring tiles all of the clans um, oh that's nice got a little bit of a strategy for each one um, as well as a description of how they play and all right a little bit of um, flavor text um, I believe the um, this is actually fairly historically accurate um, for example clan Cunningham Cunningham is the northern part of Ayrshire one of the most agriculturally fertile regions of Scotland where raising cattle has traditionally been important uh, some Gaelic word that I'm not going to attempt to pronounce is Gaelic for milk bale and ham are cunning right it's spelt c-u-i-n-n-e-a-g whereas the, the clan name is c-u-n-n-i-n-g so slightly different uh, spelling and probably a slightly different pronunciation uh, but Gaelic for milk pail and hammer means village in Old English. So, yes, the Cunninghams were from the village of milk, I guess. And yes, so their ability, clan ability, uh, has to do with milk production from the look of it. Um, and they were kind of badges which I'm also assuming are accurate and yeah the rest of the clans on the back okay interesting yeah and as I was saying the um, during the Kickstarter uh, campaign all of the backers got the chance to vote on a, a port tile a scoring tile round scoring tile and a clan um, that would be added to the game um, and if I remember rightly the we also had the option to um, Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Have some input into what they actually did. Um, but I, I didn't really get involved in that. Um, so I'm not certain. And one of the things it says is these tiles were created and selected by the Kickstarter community during Clans of, Clans of Caledonia's initial funding campaign. Uh, these tiles were not play tested by Karma Games, thus they might affect game balance in undesirable ways. We recommend not using them in your first plays. If necessary, their rules might be tweaked after more play testing. Please see and the URL to see the uh, up to date rules. And it looks like they're all marked with um, a thing so that you know which ones they are. Let's have a look. I can't remember where that ninth one was. See on here? No. It's funny. I'm sure it was one of the last ones I. Oh well. Yeah. The uh, punch boards are, <laughs> are nicely punched. They. they tokens come out really easily 
Um, so look. So what are we looking for? We're looking for a. Oh, I bet it's stored right at the bottom, isn't it? Yeah. The one I didn't, okay. Right, yes, they've got a little exclamation mark in a triangle marked on them. Um, so yeah, they're, they're all on the, the last punch board sheet. Uh, nice. Uh, I see. So Clan McEwen has a couple of question marks on. Um, so yeah, looks like they didn't even decide on how it works exactly uh, before they went to print. So you need to look up how those work. Um, but yeah, anyway, I. As I was saying, I will get these all punched. I'll have a read of the rules. And then I'll be back and I will play a game. Um, and then once I've done that, I'll give my uh, first impressions. Hello, welcome back. It's actually been a couple of days since I did the unboxing. Um, I've read the rules and before I get set up, I just wanted to go over a couple of things. Um, first, the rules themselves, um, I was really impressed with the rule book. Um, the rules are extremely streamlined from the look of it. Um, I had no problem understanding um, the, the various phases and actions you can do. Um, obviously, we'll see <laughs> how good my understanding of that actually is uh, when it comes to playing the game. Um, but yeah, I I was really impressed with the rule book. Very well, everything's very well explained, really clear. Lots of clear examples and explanations for everything. Um, probably the most important bit when you first play the game I think is to really understand final scoring um, because there are a number of things there that um, I think if you you don't understand how they're scored um, you will not do particularly well um, the, most of it is fairly obvious I mean you, you score like one VP for each step on the glory track, 1 VP for each basic good in your stock at the end of the game, uh, 2 VPs for each processed good in your stock, then money, you get 1 VP for every £10, um, leftover money breaks ties on the final score, um, okay, hops, hops are, uh, I think they're an import uh, good I'm not certain of that um, you get one VP for each hops imported listed on your fulfilled export contracts um, the cotton tobacco and sugar however are scored according to their rarity and you get either three four or five VPs per imported good. So I mean, the, the example it gives is tobacco was imported the least and cotton the most. Thus each unit of tobacco is worth 5 VP and each sugar cane is worth 4 VP and each cotton is worth 3 VP. Uh, you have imported 3 tobacco, 2 sugar cane and 6 cotton. So you earn Five times three, so that's your five by VP times three tobacco for fifteen VP. Um, four times two, so four VP 
times two cotton. No, that's not right. Two sugar cane, sorry, for eight VP. And then three times six. So three VPs times six cotton for 18 VPs. Um, so yeah, keeping an eye on how that um, uh, is going in terms of which are the rarer um, imported goods uh, is quite important. Um, you then get uh, a number of VP for the um, having the most exported contracts or most fulfilled export contracts. Um, and with that, if you tie, then you evenly divide the victory points. Um, and then the other one the, that I think is, is going to be really important to know about um, at the beginning of the game so that you actually play um, well uh, is settlement scoring. Um, this is done by the number of settlements, and a settlement is defined as um, neighbouring units, be that livestock or buildings or workers. Um, so in the illustration here, we have, uh, let's see if I get that on the secondary camera hopefully that's in focus um, yeah we can see the red player has uh, one two three uh, well four settlements however this one down here is not within the um, shipping reach of this other one over here um, this settlement has three units, a worker, a cow, and a bakery, I think. Um, and then you have um, a worker over here and a cow over here. Now, even though those are adjacent, there's a river in between, so they're not considered neighbouring. Um, the This settlement is within shipping distance of this because you can get to it across this lock um, and yeah these two are within shipping distance because they're only across the river but they're not they are separate settlements rather than um, a single settlement um, and so you're looking to build um, groups of workers and buildings and or place I should guess I should say place groups of uh, workers, buildings and uh, livestock um, that, yeah, you want as many separate groups within shipping range of each other um, to get the best score. Um, and again, it's the player with the most settlements uh, get the most um, uh, victory points for that, second most gets a lower amount and so on. Um, and the, yeah, again, tied players um, share the points the same way as um, with export scoring. Um, so yeah, those, those I think are the, um, the export cotton, tobacco and sugar cane scoring the and the settlement scoring are the, are the two most important scoring factors that I think you need to keep in mind. Um, anyway, I yes, the second thing that I wanted to mention at this point was I've seen a lot of people, well, some people, um, their one complaint about the game is that they find it difficult to get 
everything back in the box. Um, I found it actually really easy. I'm not sure what people are doing that makes it <laughs> difficult for them. Um, uh, the way I did it was simply rules on top. Um, you could put these in first. Um, certainly once you're um, more familiarised with how the game plays, you could put these right at the bottom of the box. Um, and then the other than the... So the, the rules are the last thing to go in. Um, and then before that, it's basically all, everything gets bagged up. I bagged each player colour separately. Um, you have a number of um, tokens that are given to each player. Um, they're um, port marker tokens, a an export box, um, a glory uh, tile and two um, technology tiles. So I bagged those up separately so when you're setting up you can just find the uh, player pieces and the corresponding um, tiles and tokens and give those to the player. Um, so yeah, those are all bagged up separately. Each good is bagged up separately um, and yeah I just I just chuck these in on top and make sure the 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 rules will fit above them the all the little markers and everything yeah all just separately done the dice um, scoring tiles the uh, what are they called uh, starting tiles the the port tiles um, and then the the nine clan tiles and the the one special tile for the clan McDonald. Um, yeah, the coins I I punched both the the cardboard coins, put each denomination in a separate bag, and then the three bags into a bigger bag, which is basically how my metal coins arrived. So there as they were. Um, I got the, the goods multiplier tiles. Actually, they're not really multipliers, but they're three or four of a good. Um, score pad. Uh, more goods there. All individually bagged. And then, so, so yeah, and whether you put the rules in first or last, um, the what I do is all the tiles basically by size. So at the bottom you've got the um, glory track and uh, export market. Which, you know, it's not really a market. The export tiles board. Then you've got the market board. Then you've got the two larger map tiles, the two smaller map tiles, the four player boards the four player aids and then this is all of the um, export tiles um, export contract tiles um, so yeah those just stacked up everything then just pretty much chucked on top and yeah I, I don't see any difficulty in getting everything back in the box so don't really know what people are complaining about there anyway I will get set up and then I will start the game and you can see how it plays.
Okay, we're all set up. Um, the setup is really straightforward. Um, each player chooses their, their colour, they get a player board, um, a player aid, um, and the all the bits that go with the colour they've chosen. Um, you get a export box tile there, um, port bonus marker tiles of their colour, a glory tile, uh, two of these um, technology tiles, um, and then you lay out all of your uh, player pieces in columns on your player board. Um, it's all pretty straightforward. Um, the uh, sh going from left to right, you have a column of sheep, a column of cows, a uh, column of um, what are they actually called? Dairies. Oops. A uh, column of bakeries, fields, distilleries, and then two columns of workers. The left hand one is um, woodsman, I think they're called. Uh, let's see if I can. Oh, woodcutters. And the right hand column is um, miners. Um, and you're basically covering up uh, uh, spaces on the, the player board with the pieces. Um, you also have um, these merchants. Um, there are five that go on the player board and then two that are in your supply your shipping wheel starts on the, the leftmost um, space um, and the you also have a uh, round marker in the um, so player order marker uh, in the one player game you don't really need to put it out but I did anyway. Um, it will help me keep track of how many rounds I've played. Um, although, actually, you don't actually really need that because the scoring tiles keep track of the um, rounds. Um, uh, the map board, each segment is double sided. Um, they have on both sides you've got one hex that has a um, numbered and lettered rock um, on it um, and you you put all the four rocks um, in the centre and you can choose either side of the map board. I think it they will say to um, place them out randomly. Um, I decided to, and they're, they're lettered A, B, C, D. Um, I decided and, and numbered side one, side two. Um, so, yeah, I figured I might as well go with A1, B1, C1 and D1 for this initial game. Um, you randomly select uh, five, four rather um, port bonus tiles. Um, and um, in the solo game, five uh, contracts. Um, then you, well, not necessarily in this order, but at some point you you um, randomly select the number of players plus one um, clan tiles. Um, and then you do a draft, um, starting with the 
player that will be going last. So you need to determine first player um, before that. Uh, and yeah, they, they get to choose which clan they want. Um, you also get a um, starting goods tile uh, that goes with each clan and you you choose your clan and the starting good style and then yeah do that in order from last to first player uh put out your your market board with there are um starting values marked for each good that are circled you can put your markers on there um choose five random um end of round scoring tiles um, place them out face up put out contracts i think i already said that get all your all the bits out um and that's basically it um so yeah setup is really simple um in the solo game you also need these dice these are will that will become clear when i start using those um Okay, because this is a first play, I'm not going to go into the rules in any depth as I'm playing. I will sort of mention what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Um, so, the uh, first thing I need to do is get my starting goods um, and yeah so i get 55 coins 55 money um so that's 30 45 and then i'll get five ones out one two three four five um, one grain, one wool, and one barrel of whiskey. Um, and then that can just go away and be put back in the box or, or whatever. Um, okay, so... Where to start? <laughs> um, I, I can't remember what the other clan I had come out with was, but I chose to go with Clan Campbell. Um, they can basically build uh, things cheaper. So it's um, cheese dairies. I'm going to keep forgetting what those are called. Yeah, cheese dairies. Uh, bakeries or um, distilleries uh, they can build for cheaper so in the first or for the first one they build you get um, it costs three less for the second one it's four less for the third one it's four less and then for the last one it's five less um, so I, I thought that was quite nice I'm not sure what the bit at the bottom means, let me just check that okay, not sure what that means at all if it's just I guess it just means it has to be the, the of the same type for each level I think um, my scoring tiles uh that looks like ah i've got the kickstarter one i meant to not include those so let me just get a new one out for that for the first round pop that back uh, I don't think 
think the... No, no none of the other stuff is the Kickstarter stuff. Um, as I explained in the um, unboxing, those... Um, they were... Um, yeah, three items, a port bonus, a um, end of round scoring um, tile and a clan were all voted on during the, the Kickstarter and they haven't been fully play tested. Um, <coughs> um. Okay, so doing was going through those. So in the first round I am going to be getting glory for sheep, cows, cheese dairies, bakeries, distilleries and fields. Uh, okay. That's pretty good. Um, second round. Two glory for each of the deployed workers. Um, third round. Okay, two glory for each unit of meat on your fulfilled exports. Okay. Then that must be upgrades. Yeah, one glory for each of your upgrades. Uh, technology, shipping and hired merchants. So everything from the bottom row of the player board. Um, Okay, and then in the final round, that's um, imported goods. Uh, yeah, one glory for each unit of cotton, tobacco, and sugar cane in your fulfilled export contracts. Okay, that's quite interesting. So, definitely towards the end of the the game, I'm going to be wanting to make sure I've got in. Uh, plenty of fulfilled contracts at the start. I just want to be building lots of stuff, putting lots of workers out. Um, then a bit right in the middle of doing contracts to get that bonus. Then, yeah, I mean, I'm going to be upgrading stuff anyway, so that will should be good when I get to that point. Uh, and then, yeah. That fulfilled contracts at the end. Okay, cool. So, there are basically, uh, what was it, four phases to each round. Um, preparation phase. Um, if it's not the first round, you flip the previous scoring tiles. So that's how you keep track of that. Um, do a certain number of other things, get your merchants back. Um, but yeah, none of that happens in the first round. Then you have an action phase, um, which is basically where you, you do everything you want to do. Um, and players take it in turns doing an action. So let's get on with that. Um, yeah, and basically until you pass, you can do as much as you want. Uh, so, I should probably use my clan ability to get lots of stuff built initially. Oh, I forgot one more thing of the, the setup. 
<clears throat> when you're playing solo, you take another player's pieces. You get all of the workers, I believe. And you place them on all of the spaces that cost one to develop on. So I'll just quickly do that. Um, is it hey, workers? Does that mean there's really the right? No, well, let me just check that. Uh, use workers of a different range of uh, neutral pieces and put more spaces in the active map. That would cost one. Yep. So, yeah, I only need the workers. There's a worker, there's a one space, there's a one space. Um, oh, yeah, the other thing I should say about the the map is when you're playing one or two player I think it is um, you use a slightly smaller map basically the the very outer um, row and column I guess is the best way to describe it of the map is unavailable to you um, Okay, I am going to need other stuff from the look of it. Those are other ones, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, eight. Yeah, so one there. Put sheep out. Uh, there. There. not a space I can go on anyway. Uh, yeah, looks like that's everything. Um, so yeah, basically these are spaces that I can't uh, develop on um, during the game. Um, okay, so now I think <laughs> I'm fully set up. Uh, So, actually, should I have put, I think I probably should have put two, yeah, first workers, yeah, so you put out two workers to begin with, um, yeah, so, and, be of either type. Uh, so miners have to go on spaces with um, mountains on. Um, I should check what these port bonuses are because I might want to start near the ports. Let's see that one. Take any two of your units from your player board other than fields and exchange them with any two units on the map other than fields at no cost. The two new units must be different from the two old units. You 
much money to land talk and we say deployed if you qualify you can obtain a building bonus you cannot obtain any neighborhood bonus okay uh, yeah that's interesting that is receive one bonus upgrade and gain three. Okay, that's quite useful. So I might want to go over there. That one. Uh, gain five pounds. And if you don't have an export contract, then you can. Um, Ah, right, so you, you perform building bonus here, you see, and that one, discard one process good and gain any two process goods of your choice. Okay, yeah, that's, that's not bad as well. So, okay, that's good, nice cheap place to start, I might go over there um, because yeah at the end of the first round I'm going to want processed goods uh, okay yeah I'm going to go there so to place piece on the board um, you pay the cost of the piece plus the cost of the space um, miners are 10 spaces 2 so that cost me 12 uh, I get to place another worker I'm going to go with a woodsman um, I'm thinking, oh, oh, really expensive. That's not a bad place. I know it's a bit far from there. I need to. Okay, in that case I'm going to go over here, that costs 3, that costs 6, so that's 9 in total, so I'll put 10 in and get one back. Um, yeah, so, I think the main thing I want to do is expand because that's what's going to be most uh, beneficial in terms of that first round scoring um, Okay. Oh, that's expensive. They're really expensive. Oh, okay. 
Uh, there are lots of choices. The the walls might be pretty simple, <laughs> but there is a lot of options for things to do. Um, now, so those are cheaper. Yeah, that's cheaper. And then, so how much money have I got? 10, 20, 29. Um, and I could also, oh, also sell some stuff. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I want to do that this point okay I've got to put stuff out there's no point in not doing that because I just won't get anything if I don't. Okay, let's start with a cheese dairy over here. Um, now, when you expand, you've got to go in a space neighbouring um, an existing space. So at the moment I can pretty much only go here, there, there, there or there um, until I upgrade my shipping and then I can start skipping over um, rivers and then locks later. Um, but yeah, I think I'll go with the cheese dairy there. So that's eight um, because of my clan ability that makes that five plus the two is seven um let's also do a bakery and we'll put the bakery over here um the everything apart from workers can go in any space workers have to go where there's either a mountain or forest depending on their type um right so the bakery here so eight minus three is five plus three is eight so ten and two change i'm down to 14 already um i think i should probably do a distillery start making some whiskey I'll put that over here. Um, now, one thing is when if you're playing uh, two or more players, when you build next to an opponent, you get bonuses from that. But in the solo game, that doesn't happen at all. Um, basically, these um, neutral player markers are just blocking spaces and nothing else. Um, so yeah, that's 10 minus 3 is 7 plus 4 is 11. Okay, so I'm down to 3 money. Uh, I think I need to sell stuff. So is that actually stuff that you've got? Let me check that scoring because I might have misunderstood how that works. All right, deployed. Yeah, so I want stuff out on the board, not back here. So I can sell this stuff. Um, let's see, the way 
selling works is you can take as many of your um, yeah, as many of your merchants as, as stuff that you want to sell, and you place it on the market either at the top or the bottom, depending on whether you want to buy or sell. Um, I'm selling, so what's worth the most at the moment? Uh, uh, whiskey, yeah. So if I go there, then I'll sell my one whiskey for 11 money, 11 pounds, and then the price goes down, or well, the value goes down. Um, now, if I'd have had multiple um, barrels of whiskey, I could have put two there, and I would have sold two at eleven. Um, but instead, I'm going to next turn sell the grain. I think yes, grain. Uh, for five, and that goes down one. Okay, so that, that now gives me nineteen. Um, if I yeah, upgrade my shipping. That costs four. I can now expand over rivers. Um, so that gives me more spaces. I can then expand into these and this one and over here. Um, and by doing that, I'm starting to make separate settlements, which I'm going to want to do for. Um, end of game scoring. So, okay, do I want to do my processed stuff? Um, fields are good because they are going to score double at the end of the round. Um, workers are good because they get you more money. But you're limited in, in in where you can place those. Uh, well, that's not a bad place. That's only eleven. But that's only going to leave me four. Uh, I could hire another. Yeah, I could do that. So I could hire another merchant. Or oh, are they merchants? Yes, merchant. Which cost me four. Um, although actually that. Yeah, no, I will do that. Cost me four. I'll then send him to work to sell my wool, which gets me four back. Um, but that means in future rounds I can um, do more. Uh, buying and selling. Okay, fields. I don't have enough for fields. So, yeah, forget fields. Uh, so if I can get some sheep and cows out. Uh, do I consider getting a... a um, contract? Because if you get a contract in the first round, you actually uh, gain um, five money for it, um, so it's well worth doing. Uh, I 
possibly should have looked at those. Actually, yeah, no, wouldn't doesn't make any difference. There's no I could have fulfilled in the start. Uh, but I think I will take that one. That's not bad. I got. I'm going to be making bread and. that and I can always get more. Yeah, so I'm going to take that. So I get five money for doing that. So I've now got 20, which means I potentially could do that, but I'm thinking I want to fulfill this next round. So I need to get another bakery out. Um, again, that's cheaper, so it's only five, and I need to find somewhere to put it. Okay, four over here. Yeah, that's a good, cheap place. Put that there. So, five plus four is nine. <coughs> and that's, yeah, I'm now... Uh, after you've done all your actions, you have a production phase. Um, and based on how many um, of each thing that you've um, put out, you get different um, goods. Um, so because I've got two bakeries out, I will get two loaves of bread, which I need for my contract. Um, I've got one distillery out, so I'll get one barrel of whiskey, which I need for my contract. Um, so yeah, that's really use useful, um, doing that. Um, actually, I just realised that is on the wrong side. That should be like that. Okay. Uh... Could still put more of those out. Well, it's probably worth doing, although it's going to make. Yeah, if I start selling stuff, the value of that, but I'm probably going to need them for contracts anyway. Um, let's see, we've got meat and wool and cheese, that's got a lot, that's a lot of wool. We need to start putting sheep out if I want to get that. Okay, yeah, let's do that, let's put some sheep out. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, so I can only put it in a three cost space. Is there anywhere? Uh, well, I don't think there is. Oh, yeah, there's there. That's actually a two cost space. Yeah, let's go for that. So the sheep itself costs eight. And the space I'm putting it in costs two. So that goes there. Right, I'm down to one money. Um, I've got no merchants I can use to, and nothing to sell anyway. Uh, I don't want to buy anything because I've only got one money. Can't buy anything more out. So at this point, I pass. Um, it goes on to the next round. Um, I believe as soon as you pass, you get money for passing. Uh, let me just double check that. <coughs> yep, you receive the pass money indicated. Um, so yeah, if we, if we were using, if we were playing with, say, 
two players and the second player um, the my opponent uh, passed first they would get 16 money and then I'd get 13 but because it's solo I just get 16 money um, so you, you get money every single round at the end of every single round um, right we then go into production um, and this is done in a particular order uh, where is it so each deployed worker earns you money so each woodcutter earns four pounds each miner earns six pounds um, or six and eight if you've got your uh, technology upgraded um, so I've got and what, what's really nice about this is you don't have to count up how many things you've got on the board you can just look on your player board and go okay I've got one of those missing and one of those missing so that's uh, four and six um, and in fact as you uncover the, the next ones the the amount showing goes up by the correct amount um, so yeah really nice bit of uh, design there um, so yeah four and six so ten money for my workers then produce basic goods so uh, sheep produce wool cows produce milk fields produce grain I've only got sheep out at the moment so I get a wool for my one sheep that is out and then um, ah, I just realized I've done something completely wrong damn you need the stuff out to process it okay never mind live and learn uh, so yeah at this stage I would produce processed goods and the way that works is if I had milk I could for each dairy turn one milk into cheese similarly with bread and whiskey you need fields to produce the grain to then produce into bread turn into bread or so yeah I screwed that up <laughs> which means I'm not going to be able to fulfill that which means yeah oh dear okay but we now have end of round scoring so for each deployed um, thing other than a field or a worker you get one glory so it's one two three four five five glory uh, and then in the solo you have a an additional phase uh, oh right it's at the beginning of each round um, so yeah new round starts we have the uh, preparation phase and the way that works is you flip the previous scoring tile um, refill empty boxes there then uh, after market uh, you retrieve your merchants and then in the solo game you have a market to phase and this is where the dice come in so you roll 
the dice. Um, I think it's three times. Uh, yes. So one die has the the different goods on. The other one has uh, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, and plus or minus three. So, um, good type cheese um, is going to go up by two. Um, now, on the market board, there's a bracketed section. Um, when the value marker is within that section, then you um, take the plus or minus into account when it's either side um, you ignore that um, and if it's if it's low then you just put it up by two if it's high it comes down by two um, so in this case cheese is within the bracketed part so it goes up to 12 uh, then Okay, and each each good can only change once during this. So I got cheese again. So we rolled that. We get bread. It is within, and it's a minus two. So that goes down to eat. Now cheese, we've already done. Uh, that looks like milk. Um, that goes up by two. One two. Uh, right, and then um, randomly remove um, one of the six contracts um, based on the last um, plus or minus number uh, rolled. So you have a, a minus column, a plus column, and then one, two, and three rows, so this is plus two, so that one gets removed. Okay. Right, now... <laughs> I, I need fields, because I can't make any bread. I suppose I could buy bread. Um... I also need cows to make milk so that I can get cheese. Oh, I need fields. Yeah, I really didn't think that through on the first round at all, did I? Okay, so. Fields are so expensive. They're eighteen. And I want workers out. So maybe I should just put workers out and then think about scoring this, fulfilling this towards the end of the next round. Yeah, I think I'm just going to have to do that. Because workers will get me more money. And are going to get me more glory. Um, I could sell my wool. Yeah, it's always good to put sheep out. See, wool's only going to get me four. I might as well sell it. Uh, so I'll get a five, put a one back. Um, yeah. 
going to do a field and see 18. That's five. There's a four. That's a three. That's probably my best option there. Uh, yeah, that is the best place to do the field. So that'll be 21 in total. But that is going to mean I'm going to get some grain at the end of this round, which I can convert. Uh, how many grain do you actually get? Two grain. So that's enough for the bread. So I'm going to buy a grain as well, which cost me four. Oh, and I didn't adjust the price of the wall, did I? No, I need to adjust that. Um, one thing with buying and selling is you can't buy and sell um, a single good within a, a round. So I couldn't um, sell wall and then buy it. can do I think I should think about upgrading Upgrade my shipping one more space so I now can hop over single lock spaces. Um, at the moment, that's I mean, it means I can build out to here. Uh, which actually gets me within range of this port, which is quite nice. Um, that gets me a free upgrade. I, mean, I could do one of my technology upgrades. Um, and I haven't put any people out, have I? <laughs> so maybe I won't do that at this point. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. I'll get my coin back because then I've got six, which allows me to put a uh, woodsman out. Oh no, no, it doesn't. Because I don't know enough to pay the, so I will, yeah, I will upgrade my shipping. Oh. Can't believe I did that wrong. Oh, and I forgot to take my grain when I bought one. Okay, right. Now, can't do any more, so I've got to pass. So we do end around. Scoring. I think, I think we do it in that order. Actually, no, we do that after. So we do production. So we get a wool. Yay! I've got no cows out, so I can't produce any cheese yet. Got fields though, so I get two grain. Oh, and I should have done the money already, which I forgot. So, 10 money from my two workers out. Uh, I can then do processed goods. So, I can convert my three grain 
into two bread and one whiskey. Uh, right, then I do the, the scoring. So I've got two workers out, so that's four uh, glory. One, two, three, four. Um, then we do the... Well, go back to um, the beginning. Um, flip that over. Take these guys off. Refill that. Roll these to adjust prices. So wheat is going up three. One, two, three. Cheese is going up two. One, two. Bread, it's not coming down to, it's going up to, because it's in the lower section. Okay. Right, now, oh, and I didn't get my pass bonus, I forgot that. 16. Okay, this is, this is a little bit better. <laughs> Okay, I can now fulfill this, uh, so I might as well do that straight away. So, e pay the, the required goods, so two bread and one whiskey. Um, the imported goods get marked, so hops go to two and cotton goes to three. And we flip that over, and that allows me to now get another one. Um, they're now going to cost five. Um, in the second round, they're free. Um, they then cost five, ten, and fifteen. Um, so I need to think about what I want at this point. Um, let's see. I've got twenty-eight money. What's the scoring for that that tile? Scoring tile. It was each unit of meat on your fulfilled export contracts. Hmm. So if I can, I want to try and get okay, I don't know any cheese, I don't know any so that's that's just not going to happen because I'm not buying the things I need. Not when they're that expensive. No. Okay. So I think I need to get some cows out. Oh, and I didn't get rid of the so it was a minus two. Uh, that one disappears. So, yeah, the scoring on that is irrelevant. Uh, right, I think I need to get people out, which is what I should have done last time. Can I go across locks? That only really helps me over there, but it gets me within one of that. That's probably a good, and I can put either of those on there. Okay, I'm going to put a 10, 16. Yeah, I'm going to put a miner out there. He's going to go over here. Um, I 
like I'm then going to use that to upgrade my miners so they get me more money because um, then that's um, 16 money at the end of the round from my miners instead of 12 at this point uh, and I get three glory for that one two three okay now could use that as well but that's basic no, that's processed goods which I don't have any of <laughs> okay I'm going to get a cow out. Where can I build a cow? Okay, cost nine. So, somewhere that cost three. Put it there. Uh, I can put it there. <laughs> That's basically the only place I can put it. Okay, that's not a bad place. That allows me to hop over to this and start making another settlement down here. That's quite good. Yeah, I'll do that. I'm going to put a cow here. So, nine for the cow, three for the space is 12 money. Uh, I could sell my wall, but it's only worth three. I'm really not going to be able to do anything with that. So I think I'll keep hold of the wall. So, which means I pass. So I then get my 16 monies. from my workers so that's 20 uh, basic goods so I get a wool I get a milk I get two wheat I can do to processed goods uh, probably I'm going to want to do that yeah cheese and bread are both useful so although yeah, I'll make some cheese and two loaves of bread. Okay, and then go into, oh yeah, scoring, yeah, don't score anything from the scoring tile. So we then do the, whatever the first bit is, preparation. Uh, don't, merchants are already off. Uh, flip that, roll the dice, adjust the market. Uh, guessing that's wool. Yeah, that must be wool. Uh, so that's going up in price, that's good, because that means I can sell these, although I maybe want those for contract. 
Uh, next. Bread comes down to, does come down to. And whiskey goes up one. And then, oh, and I should have refilled this. The minus one space goes away. Okay. Uh, right. Upgrade score at the end of this. So, currently getting one, two, three, four points from that. Uh, contracts cost ten at this point. That one's not bad. I could probably... Yeah, I could probably actually get that. Yeah, okay, I'm going to buy a contract. I'm going to buy this one. Although I can't fulfill it at this point, I reckon I will be able to next round. Um, and it's going to give me 15 money, which is pretty good. Um, and also it imports more cotton and more hops, um, which I'm already importing. So collecting more contracts with those is going to be good for in-game scoring. Okay, so I now want to make a cow so that I've got enough cheese next round um, oh, I'll need a dairy as well so nine okay that's dairy is going to be cheaper we're in round four or oh, no so it's the second yeah second one of it so it's minus four for that oh, I think I may have done that wrong I think I probably should have one more money but it doesn't matter. So that'll be four. That'll be nine. So that'll be 13. So that leaves me two, 12, 13. Okay. Uh, so I think the cow, I'm going to start spreading over here. Um, and I think then I'll spread over here. So I can join these settlements up so they're all within shipping range of each other. But yeah, he so nine plus that's thirteen. That gets me two back. Um this is gonna cost me four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. So I've got six there. Okay. Now, I don't need my bread at this point. But I might want to save it so I can do another contract later. How much is bread worth? Bread is only worth eight. That would give me 16 money and it would allow me to, I could build a, yeah, I might do that. How much do I need? 10, 14, uh, so I actually only need to sell one of these. Yeah, I'm going to sell one of my bread. Eight, five, six, seven, eight. Um, let's turn some of this back into sensible coinage. So I've got fourteen. 
which, and I need to adjust that, which is exactly the right amount to build a miner, or deploy a miner, whatever the, you don't really build people. <laughs> um, yeah, on that space, so 10 for the miner, 4 for the space, so 14 money. Um, and then I'm going to have to pass, so I get my 16. Although, is there anything else I can do? I could, could turn that into, so yeah, actually, maybe not pass yet. I could turn that, oh, I could turn that into two cheese. Wow, that gives me loads of money. Yeah, so use this port to turn my bread into two cheese. Um, now I know I'm going to get the cheese that I need for this during the production because I've got the two milk which I can turn into two cheese which will give me three cheese I'm getting the, the wool so I've, I've got these two cheese spare and currently cheese is worth 14 so I'm going to take my two merchants and I'm going to sell two cheese for 28 money 25 6 7 8 and now what I need to check is how many spaces that goes down uh, yes by as many steps as the number of goods traded so that goes down to that gives me 28 money, which means I could do some more expansion somewhere. So what do I need? Should I do a field? Field there's good. That's going to give me more grain to turn into more stuff. Uh, I could do that. I could upgrade that. Let's see, if I upgrade that, I want upgrades, so maybe I should spend this money on upgrades rather than, yeah, I think I might do that. So, 10 will upgrade my um, woodman, 4 will upgrade my shipping and I've got 14 left that is still enough to I could do 11 yeah I think I'm going to do that this time or round rather so my 11 gets me a woodman here, which gets me another settlement. Uh, yeah, I like that. And then I think I have to pass, because there's nothing else I can do. So, yeah, going into the final round. So, 16 money. Okay, so, production next, isn't it? Um, So money for my workers, so 24 plus 12 is 36, 1, 2, 3, and 6. Um, then 
then we do the basic goods so I get a, a wool two milk two grain Uh, then do the processed goods. So I will turn the two milk into two cheese. Um, I'm going to consider. Let's see, what have I got out there? Mm. Don't think there's any point in. Grain is actually worth quite a lot as it is. Whereas bread's really cheap. Um, whiskey, whiskey's worth slightly more. So yeah, I should do one of those into a whiskey. So I can sell that instead of the green right then we go back to the preparation get my merchants back um, refill and then roll the dice so Wall goes up one. Uh, whiskey goes down one. That was not good. <laughs> Although it's still more valuable than green. And bread goes up two. So I probably should have got some bread. Yeah, in fact now bread is worth more than grain so I should have done and the plus two one goes away that flips did I get my I didn't do that scoring did I uh, so number of upgrades one two two three four five one two three four five so yeah flip that over right Okay, we're now in the final round. The that is all about fulfilled contracts. Um, I don't think. I suppose I could. Yeah, I could potentially get a couple more contracts. Um, don't think any of them are going to. I might. Um, that's expensive. I should start by ful fulfilling this. So, three wool, three cheese, fulfill this. I get four, one, two, three, four cotton. I get 15 money. That's going to be particularly useful. Um, and two hops, one, two. Okay, now, contracts we have out, hmm. So I currently have one, two, three, four, five, six settlements. Um, what's that worth? In the solo game, you get a number of victory points depending on how many settlements you have um, and how many. Victory points, um, how many uh, fulfilled export 
things get you victory points. I need five to even get four. Wow. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I need another two settlements to get any. Okay, I've got... I can go into here. So that would be another one. Um, can't get across there. Is there somewhere else? I can go over here. Yeah, make another, make a small settlement here. Yeah, I'll have to do that. And it's only going to get me six victory points. And I somehow need to try and get three contracts done. <laughs> okay, that might not happen. We shall see. Um, especially as they cost 15 each. That's like 45 money. And then I've got to buy the stuff to be able to fulfil them. Uh, but that, that would be nine. So I could do one of them. <sighs> yeah, it's not going to happen. That would leave me eleven. Although that gets me 15 from doing it, so it's essentially free at this point. Um, and eight hops. Okay, let's, let's try doing that. So, uh, although, do I want to do my. I probably want to do those. So, what's the cheapest? Option there, six, twelve. Okay, let's get my settlements out. So, put him out there, cost me twelve. Although, actually, no, that's not the cheapest option at the moment. Um, building some of this stuff is the cheapest option. Because I'm minus five on that. So, yeah, these are... These are three apiece. So yeah, building one of these. There is only nine. So that gets me a settlement there. Uh, if I build another one, which I can do there, because that's within two of there. Yeah. So I build one there, which only costs me... Actually, no, that didn't cost me that. That cost me ten. Uh, this one is going to be cheaper, though. Yeah, fourth one is three. That's seven. So five, six, seven. Um, I then get a bonus upgrade which I think I think what's my in-game scoring options
think there's much point in. I think I'll, I'll take a, a merchant. Um, it cost me four to do that. But I think that's worth doing. Because now I'm going to get contract for 15. I'm going to get this one. Now I have the whiskey, I just need some bread. Bread is nine. So if I buy some bread. Am I going to need any more bread for anything else? Uh, yeah, I might buy... Am I going to be able to do that? Okay. I'm going to need 18. get the 15 from that so yeah I can do this so yeah oh no no it's not 18 it's 20. I think I can still do it okay <laughs> yeah buy three bread so Nine, eighteen, twenty seven. For three bread, and put one bread for that. Um, and I'm going to buy one. Well, oh, I should put the price of bread up. One, two, three. One wall for five. One, two, three, four, five. It goes up. Got my wall. Right. Then I'm not sure this is actually worth doing, but I'm going to do it anyway. Fulfilled this contract, which gets me, uh, what was it, 15 money. And 8 on here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And see, it probably is worth doing because of the scoring of these things. Um, then going to get a contract which costs me the 15 that I just got and I'm going to get this one. Oh, and did I get rid of no I didn't get rid of the, the whiskey and the bread for that contract for this contract I need a wool and two bread um, we get two, one, two on there. Oh, have oh, I been doing that wrong? Hops. I think I've been doing that wrong. I've been recording hops instead of sugar cane. Okay. Fulfilling Right, yes, I shouldn't have been that that is sugar cane, not hops, and these are all hops. Uh so yeah, effectively that goes back to zero and then I get 
two, one, two. Um, that, if I remember rightly, is a free placement of something, which I can't afford to do anyway. <laughs> um, actually, I might be able to. Minus five. No, I can't afford to do it. But yeah, I think... Actually, oh, can I use any of the port bonus tiles? No. I mean, I could get some more money. Actually, I'm not within shipping range of those, so no, it doesn't matter. Nor that one. Yeah, I've used the only port bonuses I can use. Uh, where's the contract information? Yeah, yeah, this, um, contract reward is you can do a, an expand without paying the the land cost uh, you still have to pay for the units um, and I've only got two money so I'm not going to be able to do that um, but I do get three hops which although, yeah, the way hops work is they give you VPs at the end of the, the game um, actually, do you or do you score them immediately? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think they just, yeah, just final scoring, one VP for each hops imported, listed on your fulfilled export contracts. Uh, okay, so I've fulfilled that, I've got two money, I've got one thing that I can't sell because I've got no merchant. Uh, so then I pass, and you do do everything because um, the the game ends um, after the final um, the round scoring and then you do game end scoring so I get yeah I pass I get my 16 uh, money I then get the income from my workers so that's 36 um, and this is important because you get victory points for money at the end of the, the game um, I then get my uh, basic goods so one wall Two milk, uh, two grain. I now have to decide. Oh, I didn't do that, did I? So, oh no, that's not until after anyway. So yeah, don't worry about that. That comes next. What I was going to check was: Are processed goods worth more? in end game scoring or yes they're two victory points per processed good so 
at this point you want to turn everything you can into processed goods so milk two milk into cheese uh, three grain into two bread one whiskey um, then we do this scoring and I need to remember what that scoring tile meant okay one glory for each unit of cotton tobacco and sugar cane on fulfilled export contracts so we've got three seven nine uh, that's 17, so that's 26. Okay. Then we do end game scoring. So at this point, I need my pad. And I need to find a pen. Okay, so let's move that out of the way. You get one VP for each step on the glory track, so 26. Then get one VP for each basic good, so one wall is one VP. Two VPs for each processed good, so one, two, three, four, five is ten. Uh, one VP for every ten whole monies. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. So that's five. No, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. One VP for each hops, so that's two, four, two. 12, 15. Right, and then cotton, tobacco, and sugar cane um, score according to their rarity. So the most common, um, so the most common imported good is worth three victory points. So that's cotton. It is worth three, and you score three times the number that you imported. Uh, so I imported seven, so that's 21. Uh, tobacco was zero, I imported zero, so that's a big fat zero. Uh, yeah. No, tobacco would have been five because it's the rarest, but I imported zero, so it's a zero. Uh, sugar cane is second, so that's four per sugar cane. I've got two, so that's eight. Um, then export scoring. Um, as I said earlier, the four two, three or four players, um, yeah, for three or four players, you score 12 VP for the player with the most fulfilled export contracts, and then six for the second most. In two players, it's eight for the player with the most fulfilled contracts. But in solo, um, you have a table. If you fulfill five export contracts you get four VPs I needed four 
Um, if it's six, then it's eight, and seven or more is 12. Um, so yeah, I get nothing for that. Uh, settlement scoring, again, it normally it's three or four players play with the most settlements within shipping reach, 18, second most is 12, third most is six. It's two players, it's 12 and zero. Um, in solo, however, it, you get different numbers of VPs depending on how many settlements you've got. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is just enough to get me six VPs. Um, eight to ten settlements get you six VPs, 11 to 13 is 12 VPs, 14 or more is 18. So I get six VPs for that. So, okay, and they have a table of scores and what it means. Um, zero to 115, which I think is probably where I'm scoring, is newbie. So let's have a look. Six, seven, 17, 18, 26, uh, 32, so that's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 92. So yeah, not a great score, but I did that first round was almost completely wasted if I'd have realised about how or remembered how production works I would have done that slightly differently um, probably would have made some uh, planted some fields um, and got some cows out uh, and yeah the contracts I would have picked up would have been different as well I think I, although I can't remember what was out at that point um, one thing that didn't come up in the game um, is when a contract has meat on it um, you pay for it by removing um, the corresponding animal so on this contract it's uh, a leg of lamb on um, I'm sure there was a beef one yeah so you got a nice steak on that one um, so yeah if I if I were fulfilling one of those contracts this one for example I'd have to pay two beef which means slaughtering two cows and you return them to your player board um, which has a couple of interesting effects First, it covers up your production for that time. Um, but it also creates gaps. Um, and this can mean, so for example, let's put these back wherever they were. I think they were there and there, weren't they? Um, let's say I was doing the um, this one that requires lamb instead. Um, I would have to return this sheep um, and that means that this is now a separate settlement um, so you can create new settlements or smaller settlements out of bigger settlements um, by slaughtering your animals uh, which I think is a really nice little mechanic um, the, you know it ha and it, obviously in a multiplayer game that's going to open up spaces that you can move into because in multiplayer you can only one person can um, put a unit on a single hex so you can block people in and but then in order to fulfill some contracts you're going to want to slaughter your animals and in order to 
create more settlements, you're going to want to slaughter your animals. So it's a really nice little mechanic there that encourages you to um, to make separate uh, settlements, which you then score for. So you, you know, it's everything is encouraging you to do that, and it's stopping you from just sprawling over one space or um, blocking players in with single uh, large single settlements um, and of course the the waterways create settlements anyway because so all those these are adjacent they are actually separate settlements because they're separated by the river um, yeah which is really nice um, uh, not sure what else to say at this point um i think at this point i'm gonna pack everything up um and i will i will go away and i'll i'll think about the game a bit because there's there's a lot to process a lot going on and then i'll come back and i'll do a separate um video in which i, I talk about um what i think of the game i might even get another game in at some point before then um, so that I've got more of a feel of it uh, but yeah I will at some point come back and record a I'm not sure what to call it at this point maybe a final thoughts segment to go on the end of the video so thank you for now and I shall yeah I shall be back in a bit with some Final thoughts. Uh, so, first play thoughts on Clans of Caledonia. Um, overall, very impressed with the game. Um, it's extremely elegant, um, and I I felt it had a very Uwe Rosenberg feel to it. Um, the the economic system is is really tight um, there were there were quite a few rounds where I wanted to do more than I could afford to do um, which um, is a feature of quite a few or that kind of tightness is a feature of quite a few um, Rosenberg games and, and this had that same kind of feel um, I still haven't had a chance to play multiplayer and I would like to do that because I feel that the game will be even better uh, multiplayer than it is solo and that's not to say it's a bad solo game, it's far from it. Um, I think it's a really good game um, at any, oh, well, I can't say at any player count, but probably at any player count. Um, as I believe I mentioned uh, towards the end of the gameplay video, the I found the, um, the settlement scoring mechanic really interesting, and then the, the way it forces you to spread out and make little settlements rather than producing one big sprawling settlement um, and the way that interacts with the shipping upgrades and the um, livestock um, slaughtering for uh, export contracts I, I think is something really interesting and something I want to explore in more depth in the future um, the art and graphic design I was really impressed with again um, uh, there were some slightly unclear um, icons in um, the uh, pieces that I used in the 
my gameplay, um, particularly um, Clan Campbell, I think it was I used. Um, yeah, it had at the bottom two white hexes and an equals, and it wasn't really clear from just the iconography what that meant. Um, however, the explanation of what the clan did, and from what I've read, the explanation of what all the other clans is really clear and it's really easy to understand. Um, in fact the rules in general I thought were very streamlined. Um, they they make thematic sense um, and very easy to follow. Um, the gameplay mistakes that I made in the, the first round um, were completely down to me. They were not um, something that was lacking in the rules, it was just that I forgot that um, in order to produce processed goods you need the things that produce the um, basic goods first. Um, Now I need to go back through the rules um, to check whether I'd, I've missed anything or misunderstood anything, but there was nothing that came up during the play where I thought mm, I'm not sure if I'm playing that correctly. Um, they were all, yeah, all the rules are very logical. Um, and very straightforward. Um, I think the game for both solo and multiplayer play has a lot of replayability. Um, you have eight clan tiles, um, or nine if you include the, the Kickstarter stuff. Um, the and then you combine those eight clans with one of nine starting tiles and that gives you, uh, was it 72 different combinations. Um, there are then 16 ways that you can lay out the four map tiles. Um, you use five or yeah five of the eight or nine scoring tiles in the game and then four uh, of eight or nine of the port bonus tiles um, so you know you're only seeing about half of each of those and obviously the um, I can't do the math in my head but the, the combinations of those two things uh, is quite large. Um, and then you've got 50 export contract tiles, of which in a solo game you're probably seeing a dozen or so of. Um, so there's a huge amount of um, game space to explore. Um, particularly when playing solo, but even multiplayer, um, there there are so many different um, combinations of um, starting setup um, and things that come out during play for you to uh, um, explore. Yes. Um, the theme I found, I really like it. Um, I wonder how historically accurate it is. Um, my understanding of Scottish history um, is not brilliant, um, but I know that the um, 
dissolution of the clan system um, happened pretty rapidly and um, I wonder whether at the point in time that the game is set whether there was as much um, whether the clans were as separate as they are portrayed in the game. Um, the settlement scoring, whilst I really like the way that plays, um, I did wonder what the thematic reasoning for that was. Um, it seems a bit odd. Um, but I don't, I don't think it's, you know, the, the, I don't think either of those things are um, massively detrimental to the game. Um, it's, yeah, they're, they're things that I can, I can ignore and um, I will still enjoy the game. Um, the, probably the one biggest criticism I have of the solo game um, and this might change with more plays um, I you know I've only played it the once um, but I felt that the the market in the solo game with the way you you roll the dice to adjust the prices of three goods each round um, was a little too random um, and again I think that's one thing that will play much better in multiplayer um, and I think you also lose a certain amount of um, the obvious interaction <laughs> between players um, in solo um, the, I mean, you don't have the, the neighbourhood bonus uh, rules um, in the solo play at all. Um, and I can't remember if I covered that during the gameplay, but basically when you uh, deploy a unit in a hex next to an opponent's unit, um, you get to purchase the good that the opponent's unit produces um, and you need to have um, the merchants free to be able to do that um, and obviously you need to have the money to be able to do that um, but that clearly gives a um, point of interaction between players and um, where they deploy units and how they expand and it will make that whole uh, aspect of the game more interesting um, and yeah as I said none of, none of this is a really big detractor from the game in solo um, it's just things that I think are going to be better in multiplayer um, it's still a really good solo game um, I I enjoyed my play of it a lot um, despite my <laughs> mistakes in the first round um, and yeah I look forward to exploring the um, gameplay a lot more and seeing are there other approaches that might score better or is it um, is it better to start by uh, deploying your workers first and um, even within just that are um, the uh, again I can't remember what they're called the tree chopping down people woodsmen 
think that's what the game refers to them as. Um, are they better than miners, or are miners better than the other? I mean, obviously, miners get you more money each round, but they cost more. Um, it seemed like the spaces were about on the on the board were pretty much balanced between those two types. You, uh, um, it didn't seem to be. Um, actually, I don't know. I'd have to I'd have to look at the the board again to to see whether that um, is a factor in which of those is better. Um, I also need to explore and to play better <laughs> with the um, other units, the goods producing units, and see how you can use those and and use the market to generate money. Um, I yeah, as I said, I I suspect the the market in solo play is a little too random to be able to do that particularly well. Um, but I feel in multiplayer where you can get a better sense of what the market is going to do because of what other players are doing and what contracts they're going for. Um, um, what was I, where, where was I going with that? I'm not sure. Um, I think I was saying that um, in multiplayer, I, I feel that the you'll get a better sense of um, the direction the market is going to move and therefore a better idea of which um, goods producing units to deploy and make use of. Um, the, I think that's probably all I want to say. Um, yeah, so to to sum up, um, excellent game, very elegant, very streamlined rules, um, everything that makes sense, a couple of little issues that um, I don't think are going to detract too much from the, the solo game, but I would be interested to see uh, whether players come up with variants to fix those issues. Um, but yeah, great game. I am very much looking forward to playing it more. Um, hopefully get some multiplayer games in. Um, and it's definitely one that is going to hit my table more solo. Um, the setup is really quick for it, and um, I think with practice, the gameplay will get a lot quicker. Um, so, yeah, really impressed. Um, I'm not sure what else to say, really, um, other than. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the gameplay. I suspect my um, play in the um, first round was probably the most entertaining part of the video. Um, if you would, I would be grateful if you could subscribe to the channel, share this video, um, all the usual stuff, and join me for another gameplay video in the future. Um, at this point, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing next. Um, First Martians is one that keeps calling to me, but that is such a complex game that I'm not sure I'm ready to um, put a play on video just yet. Um, but that will definitely be played at some point in the future. Um, might do 
small solo games like the, the Oniverse games or possibly leaving Earth. That's, a, that's one I really enjoy playing. Um, but yeah, stay tuned. Um, if you subscribe to my video, you will get notifications when the next video is up. Um, oh, I also have a Google Plus and Facebook um, community and page, respectively. Um, they're both called Scott Plays, so they're pretty easy to find. Um, if you subscribe to those, I will be posting more information about what I'm looking to um, record next. Um, so yeah. Thank you again, and I shall hopefully see you next time.